I joined NASA Astronaut Corps in 1998. I flew three times in 2006, 2008, and then the, uh, then the last flight in 2011, last shuttle flight. You know, there are a few what I call gee whiz moments in space. One of them, of course, is the launch. Uh, you, you know, you never quite know how it's going to feel. I remember as we watched the Earth out the window disappear below us thinking, I can't believe I'm actually flying to space. You know, in a matter of just eight minutes from the time you launch uh, till the time the main engines stop, uh, that's all it takes, and you're there. The sun sets and rises 16 times a day. The sun rose for the very first time about uh, 20 minutes after my first launch. I looked out, and I mean, the Earth was screaming past us. But where I really got this overwhelming perspective was as we were getting ready to dock with the International Space Station. And you get to look up and look at this leviathan the spacefaring nations of the world have built. It's just sort of like a, a moment out of science fiction. You want to take people vicariously on the trip with you. CST-100 is a, is a spacecraft. It'll take any paying passenger up to the International Space Station or other low Earth orbit destinations and bring them safely back to Earth. Everybody looks at the shuttle and says it's a magnificent vehicle. Most people are impressed with just the size of it. You know, we thought, is this the best way to do it? Is the best way to combine the payload with the people? Because that's really what the shuttle was. We took seven people and up to 50,000 pounds of payload and thought maybe it's better, safer, uh, more reliable if you separate the payload from the people and take the payload up and then take the people up in a smaller, simpler vehicle. And when you condense everything scale-wise, you condense it in simplicity as well. If you look at what we have right now, we have a one heat shield underneath uh, the, the base of the spacecraft. It's a, a lightweight, a blader heat shield that sheds heat, okay, so it carries heat away with it. The nice thing about it is to reuse the spacecraft, all we do is we put a new heat shield on. So, you know, when you look at simplicity, just in, in, the, in the case of the thermal protection system, uh, we have a replaceable heat shield. We don't have to worry about individual tiles, and, and uh, it enables us to quickly turn around the spacecraft and reuse it again. You look in our spacecraft, you see a much cleaner environment, which is populated only by the, the very small instrument console. One of the big changes is modern display technology. We're able to interface where previously we had to use switches or dials. Now we can call up any one of a multiple of displays. We have about 30 of them, and you can interact with the vehicle through all those displays. So you can really limit the real estate. And when we limit the real estate, we limit the weight. We increase the passenger carrying capability. So you really want clean lines with not a lot of obtrusive instrumentation and boxes filling up the, the habitable volume on the inside. The new interior, inspired of course by Boeing commercial airplanes, the team that de designed the interior lighting scheme for the 787 and some 37s, I think they've just done a wonderful job of creating this luxurious space flight. Our training flow will be fairly short. Learn how to fly the shuttle, it took three years. And, you know, we hope to have pilots and crews ready to fly within nine months. They have to understand what's going on, but they don't have to physically engage the vehicle. The reason we can do it is uh, this vehicle is designed to be autonomous. Uh, it's designed to operate largely itself. Boeing's been in this business for 50 years. We've been building spacecraft. But I think we have really pulled together a world-class spacecraft that has benefited from the ones that have come before it. This is going to open up opportunities for somebody to go sort of of their own free will. I can see in the next 20 years paying passenger to space could be on someone's bucket list.